Hey, this is Jamie with Stonemaier Games, and today I'm going to talk about the newest version of Time Stories, my favorite mechanism in Time Stories Revolution, the Hadal Project. Um, I love Time Stories. It's one of my favorite games ever, and so I was really, really excited to play this new version. Um, it's basically a self-contained box where you don't need a base game to play Time Stories. All you need is this box right here to play. Uh, it took us about four hours to play through this in a four-player game. I think everyone had a great time. I know I had a great time. And I wanted to highlight some of my favorite mechanisms and mechanisms that are a little bit different than the original Time Stories, in case you're curious. I think almost all of them are better than the original, but I still think it's worth playing the original if you like any version of Time Stories. My number one thing, I'll start with the number one thing just to get out of the way. I love that in skill tests in this new version of Time Stories, for most of them, uh, you get something even if you fail. Um, so there is a random element to skill tests, and I'll explain how that works in a second. That's a different mechanism that I think is great. But the core mechanism, I'm not going to spoil anything here. I'm going to show you something from the rule book. Um, it kind of looks like this. A skill test will look like this, where it says you need to have five red resources, um, or at least five red resources to, uh, to well, that's the target. I'm, I'm explaining this poorly. You, this is the target right here. If you don't get that number, if you don't have enough, you take item five here. If you have more than five resources, you get item 10. And if you have exactly five resources, so there's an incentive to get exactly what the skill test is asking you to get, you get items one and four. I think this is a brilliant skill test mechanism um, because you are always, almost always moving forward. You're, you're getting something from the skill test. You never do a skill test and feel like you just wasted a turn because you didn't get it. Um, there are a few instances where that can happen, where maybe you don't get anything for, for failing, but it's very, very rare here. Most of the skill tests in the game are structured like this, and I think that's great. Now, where does this random element come from? That is from the Destiny deck, which I'm not going to show you because it's kind of fun to discover during the game. It's basically a, a deck of six cards that modify this number. So before the skill test, you decide, uh, you look at your, your own uh, inherent skill. So if I have a skill, uh, red skill of three, I can also commit... Um, I believe it's one of these tokens, one or more of these tokens to the skill test. And then I draw a destiny card. And a destiny card can actually improve my skill. It can leave it the same or it can hurt it a little bit, decrease it by a certain number. And so that's the random element to it. But because it's a deck and not a, uh, a roll of the die, you know which cards you've already drawn from that deck. The deck will tell you when to replenish those six cards and reshuffle it. But at times you might go through half the deck and you are you know exactly what's in the remaining half of the deck. And so you kind of know your odds going into the skill test as to uh, if you need to spend extra, if you don't need to spend extra. I think that's a great improvement over the original game. Um, I, I thought they, the, the time mechanism works a little bit differently in this game. That you're spending these, they're essentially time tokens. I think they're called ASRAC in this game, but they're essentially time tokens. So instead of having a board where you're moving along a track, you're just tossing in a token and saying, I'm spending that time to do this. Very elegant, very simple. I really like how streamlined that is. And last, this also is really, really cool. Um, there are, e each player has their own character, and they also have their own little deck of cards. And it's not really a deck that you're going to be shuffling. Rather, it's a deck of, um, in a way, encounters. So basically, if my character talks to a certain character that we encounter while we're moving through this uh, this mission, uh, so if so if I meet a, a, a let's say a scientist, I meet a scientist. Um, that scientist might say, "Okay, go go to card five in your destiny deck." And this is what will what this is what is said in this conversation, whereas uh, that's what my character says. But a completely other character, completely different character, has a different deck of those cards. And the same, the scientist says the same thing to them. Go to card five, but their conversation might be very different. So it gives you uh, a really nice reason to talk amongst the table and say, okay, well, this person looks like a scientist. We don't know, but they look like a scientist. And your character, uh, in their character description, it says that they are an ex a researcher. So maybe it makes sense for you to go talk to them, or maybe you have a history with that character, or maybe something else. So it gives you a reason to table talk around it, and it also gives you a reason to maybe. Have have multiple characters go talk to the same person, which is very new in Time Stories. You're not getting the same information because you yourself, you're different. You have a different relationship um, or connection to this person that you're talking to. So there's a reason to sometimes spend extra time where maybe um, one character goes and talks to the scientist and you realize, okay, they didn't really get much out of that, but I think I might actually have a good conversation with them. So you might go to them and draw a look at your card five 
takes extra time, but it also gives you a reason to, to st hang out at that location a little bit longer and have different relationships and different conversations. I thought that was really, really cool. In a different game, I think this probably would have been done with a storybook, but they did it with cards. I think that works fine too. Yeah, those are the, I think the four main mechanisms that are different in this game. Um, my favorite definitely being the skill test. But uh, I'm curious what you think. If you have a, a favorite mechanism in this new Time Stories series, or if any of these mechanisms remind you of a mechanism in another game uh, that, that you think is worth highlighting in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts there. Thanks.